In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can calculate the acceleration from a velocity time graph. And I've put three different graphs on this slide because there's three different cases that we're going to look at to be able to calculate acceleration from any velocity time graph. So let's look closer at these three different situations. So the first situation down here is where we have no acceleration. And we can see this from the graph. So at time equals zero, we're going four meters per second. A little bit later at time equals one, we're going four meters per second. Later on at two seconds, we're still going four meters per second. So in other words, there is no change in your velocity. So this flat line is showing no change. So you can instantly just look at that and just say the acceleration is zero. So wherever you see a flat line on a velocity time graph, acceleration is simply zero. That's the simplest case. The next case you need to be aware of is where you have constant acceleration. And you can tell this by a straight line on a graph like this. And when we want to deal with this one, the way that we find the acceleration is we use the gradient. And because it's a, it's a straight line, the gradient is gonna be the same everywhere. So we could pick any two points and find the gradient. And that will give us the acceleration. The most complicated case is where we have variable acceleration. So we can't simply find one number that describes the acceleration of the whole journey because the acceleration here and the acceleration here and the acceleration here are very different. You can see it's very shallow, not very steep at all down here, whereas the line becomes very steep towards the end. So at this point, it's gonna be accelerating a lot more than at this point. So you can only find the acceleration at specific points. And we do this by finding the gradient of attention. So we're gonna take a more, more close look at these two situations. I'm gonna run through how you actually do those calculations. So we'll start with a constant acceleration case because it's the easiest one. So what we need to do is remember the formula. And our formula is that the acceleration is delta V over delta T. This is our change in velocity. This symbol delta is Greek and it simply means change in physics. And we've got delta T meaning a change in time. So we can look at our graph and remember we could take it from any two points, but it's simplest to use zero because that'll save us from having to do any subtractions. So we can look at this distance here and this distance here is going to give us a change in time. So we've went from zero seconds to five seconds. So our change in time delta T is simply five seconds. So we can look at five seconds here and ask what is the velocity at five seconds? So we read that off the graph there and that is 17.5. So in five seconds, our change in velocity is 17.5 meters per second. So we've got our delta V, which will go in here. We've got our delta T, which will go in here. So we substitute and we get that the acceleration is 17.5 over five. Put that into a calculator and you can find that the acceleration is 3.5 meters per second. And because it's a constant acceleration, at any time, it's always going to be 3.5. So that's simply the acceleration of our system. The next case is non-constant acceleration where things are a little bit more different. We can only find the acceleration at specific points. So we could look at one second, we could look at two seconds, we could look at three seconds, and these would actually give all different numbers. So for this example, we're gonna look at time of two seconds. And what we need to start by doing is drawing a tangent. And a tangent like this is a line that touches at only one point. And the point where it touches is the point that you're interested in. So we are interested in finding it at t equals two. So I've drawn a tangent at t equals two. And the way that we find the acceleration at this time is to find the gradient of that line. And we could actually take any points on this line. So our formula for the acceleration at time t, not the acceleration anywhere, the acceleration at a specific time is going to be the gradient of a tangent drawn at that specific time, so touching, at one point, and that is going to come from the formula that it is the change in y divided by your change in x. So we need to choose two points on the line. So I'm gonna choose the point two, two, because that has to be on the line because we've chosen that specific point. And then we could actually choose any point. So I look along the line and find one that's convenient. And I think this one's nice and convenient. So we've got the point four, six. So this is going to be our x1, this is gonna be our y1, this will be x2, and this will be y2. We can substitute that into the expression here. So we get the acceleration at time t equals two is simply six minus two over four minus two, and that comes from these two points. This is your one points, and this is your two points. 
And then we simply tidy this up a little bit. So we're getting four over two. And then we can find our final answer, which is at this point, it's got an acceleration of two meters per second per second. So every second is getting two meters per second faster, except that as time goes on, that acceleration is actually increasing. So with non-constant acceleration, you can only find the acceleration at specific points and not the acceleration everywhere. So we've run through all of our three main cases. I hope this video was helpful to you. And finally, thank you very much for watching.